So good afternoon, everyone. So the topic is association between smoking history and overall survival in patients receiving pembrolizumab for first line treatment of advanced non-small cell lung cancer. So after looking at the topic, my first question is, should you ask your patients to quit smoking or start smoking when they are receiving the pembrolizumab? Ja Simran, Jile Zindagi, as Dr. Tarachan said, start smoking and you will have a better benefit. So the question is, is smoking status associated with overall survival among patients with advanced non-small cell lung cancer on first line single agent pembrolizumab? Why this study? With the development and proven role of immunotherapy in different cancer, there is a constant urge to find predictive markers or combination of predictive markers so that we can find a group of patients who will actually benefit or more who will not going to benefit from the immunotherapy treatment. So as we all know, PDL one alone is not sufficient. So we are looking for the other clinical as well as lab associated markers. So the objective was to compare the overall survival between patients who were current or former smokers versus who were never smoker in patients on first line pembrolizumab. So it was a retrospective study, US tier world data from near about nine years. 280 clinics with patients more than 18 years of age. The smoking stated as diagnosis of lung cancer was taken into consideration and the OS was measured from the initiation of the first line pembrolizumab monotherapy. Near about 1166 patients, the main exclusion criteria were driver mutation positive patients, more than 90 days from diagnosis to start of treatment and less than 6 months of follow up because to account for the COVID pandemic. The end point was overall survival. They took inverse probability treatment weighting to adjust for the difference in patient characteristics between smokers and non-smokers. So these were the baseline characteristics. In non-smokers, it was only 8% patients only. A large group of females as compared to smokers. Older patients in non-smokers as compared to smokers. So 8% non-smokers, non-smokers were older, median age was 78 against 72 years, more of female 67 versus 50% and non-squamous histology of 77 versus 68%. So results, when we didn't adjust it for the baseline covariates, the overall survivor for the smokers was equal to non-smokers, that is 12.1 versus 12.5 months. After covariates adjustment, Ever smokers means patients who have ever smoked, former as well as the current smokers have a significant longer OS as compared to non-smokers. It was 12.8 months versus 6.5 months, near about doubling of the OS in smokers, ever smokers as compared to non-smokers. So this was the unadjusted comparison, the first line pembrolism and monotherapy, kaplan meier curve, it was equal between both the groups. But after the adjustment of the covariates, we saw that ever smokers have a better OS as compared to the non-smoker group. So what can be the cause? The first is tumor mutation burden. We know that TMB is, so immunotherapy has shown benefit in two major groups. One is non-small cell lung cancer and the second is melanoma. In melanoma, ultraviolet rays leads to elevated TMB and in Lung cancer, smoking leads to high TMB in the lung cancer patient. Secondly, smoking changes the local immune microenvironment of the tumor and leads it to be more pro-inflammatory phenotype. So, so it is more pro-inflammatory, more immune cells are there. So these immune cells contribute to harmful tumor microenvironment that may promote the tumor growth. Third, EGFR L cross 1 is more common in non smokers, and as we have discussed previously, also KRAS is more common in smokers. And there has been a data which suggests that KRAS mutation responds better to immunotherapy. And sec last, PDL1 higher expression in smokers. So we have TMB, which is higher in smokers, we have RAS, KRAS, which is more common in smokers, and it is more. Uh, 
responsive to immunotherapy and we have pdl1 which is also higher in smokers so is this is the only data no there has been other data also this is a review of literature from multiple studies where tobacco smoking has been associated with better response in pdl1 inhibitors this is a multi uh, sorry large multicentric study where smoking status during first line immunotherapy and chemotherapy has shown a better results in smokers and this is also a meta analysis which showed that smokers benefit more from the immunotherapy modification so the crux is that there is a multiple data sheets available now which shows that there is a added benefit of immunotherapy in smokers ever smoker as compared to non smokers and we need to my take home is that we need to rise above the individual markers we look for pdl1 if it is negative we go for tmb if it is negative we go for ras or something like this and we have to come out for a combined flow chart or a formula and then to look for that which patients are those which will not benefit from immunotherapy because as the treatments are flowing we are giving immunotherapy to each and every patient we must sort out those patients which will not benefit from the treatment thank you